They just operate off the information that's put in them. If that's not put in them, they, they don't lay there at night and dream about going to the beaches of Hawaii and all this. That's, that's, that's a bunch of television hype. But the bad part with AI is if you feed it bad information, then it spits out bad information. So it's only good as the one that programs it, all right? So same way with these, I thank God for this. All right, Psalm chapter number 23. Is she going now? All right, I, we got her, amen. Hey, as, as we continue to be thankful concerning blessings, I went back here. Last Thursday, Thanksgiving Day, my Bible reading, uh, I read in several different places through the Bible, but mine in Psalms was Psalm 23. And I had a ball. I, that's the umpteenth dozen times that I have either read Psalm 23 or I have heard somebody read Psalm 23. And but, I, but as I looked at it, it just it was alive. Boy, it liveth. I mean, the Word of God just, it was living in my heart as I read that. And I went back and read it, and I read it, and I read it again. So this morning going to be umpteen dozen and one. All right. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Amen. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely, Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. What I'm going to do this morning is I'm going to break this psalm down for thanksgiving. What a blessed psalm. David was a young man when he wrote this, probably just a teenager sitting out on a hillside with a bunch of rambunctious sheep. And he said... I'm their shepherd. But he got to thinking about that a little bit, and he said, well, Lord, you're my shepherd. Everything I'm doing for these sheep, God is exponentially doing for me on the other side of this thing. And he wrote one of the most beautiful psalms in the Bible as a young man. David was a young man whose heart sought after God. Matter of fact, and I know he messed up. Hey, we just leave that alone. When you get to the New Testament, he said that he raised up David, a man after mine own heart, who would perform all my will. David was one of the greatest men in the Bible. You know, sometimes great men are men that have had great failure. A lot of people cannot overcome failure. You know, once they fail, they say, well, God won't have anything to do with me. Oh, yes, God will. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Amen. So I, I got thinking about this. Just want to break it down uh, this morning and, and give us something to be thankful for. Look at the two words, the Lord. That's capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. You say, well, why did he put it in all caps? Because this is all mighty Jehovah God thought about him this morning. Jehovah God, the Almighty, the self-existing one. <laughs> hey, he always has been, he always will be. Self-existing. The eternal one. Having neither beginning nor end. And yet he's everything in between. Jesus Christ in the Old Testament, the creator and sustainer of all things, but our Lord and Savior in the New Testament. I thank God this morning for Jesus Christ. 
He is our Lord. He's our Savior. He is our high priest. He is our advocate. He is our mediator. He's our coming king. And it says it all in one word, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. So when he started this, this is from your salvation until you get home. That's what Psalm 23 is about. There's a time when the Lord will become my Lord. I thank God I can take you to a time and take you to a place where the Lord saved me by His amazing grace on a Sunday night. I thank God for that. The Lord is my shepherd. Amen. He's the one that is going to do all this. I thank God for a time this morning. Listen, you need to know that you're saved You need to know that you're saved forever. You need to get that settled in your heart. Salvation is an act of God. It's not an act of man. Man simply brings an old bankrupt sinner and stands at the foot of that cross and says, Lord. Well, I like that. Amen. That thief on the cross, he indicted the other. He said, Dost thou not fear God? He said, We deserve to be here, but this man hath done nothing amiss. Then he looked up at Jesus Christ and said, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. Hey, isn't that simple? Lord, just do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do remember me. He said, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And the Lord took time while on the cross, dying for the sin of the whole world, dying for these two men too. And he turned around and said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Boy, I, I thank God this morning that you can be saved by just simply bringing a bankrupt sinner. He said, We indeed deserve where we are. He understood what he was. But he said, This man has done nothing amiss. He knew who he was. Boy, I thank God this morning for salvation through Jesus Christ and Christ alone. It is a finished work, it is a complete work, it's a done work. Death, burial, and resurrection is called the gospel, the good news of the Bible, that you don't have to do anything to be saved except bring an old repentant sinner and say, Lord. Boy, they try to make it so hard today. Oh, you got to pray right. You got to repent right. You got to do this right. You got to believe right. You got listen. I've never done anything right in my life, and yet God took the prayer of a repentant sinner that night, and He became Lord. Boy, I thank God for that day. You want to thank God for something? One, you thank God that He's Lord. Hey, He still got everything in control. He got the Middle East in control. He got America in control. He's got elements in control. Talking about uh, global warming. They had to quit that because for the last 20 years or so, uh, the world has been in a cooling cycle again. When's the last time you saw three-digit weather? They had to, they said they broke a record by one degree. That record was set in 1918. They were having the same weather back there they had today. So they went to climate change. Climate's always changed. Thank God he gave us four seasons. Amen. He gave us uh, summer, winter, and summer, and springtime, and harvest, and all. Oh, I thank God for that. But hey, make sure you're saved. You want to rejoice about something this morning. Thank God I am eternally His. But I want to break this on down. He said in here, I shall not want. When I was a little boy, I didn't understand that. I was just a kid. And I read it this way, the Lord is my shepherd, but I don't want Him. I'll never forget as a little boy. As a little boy, my mind said, why would, why would they not want the Lord? That just blew me away as a little boy. I thought it said, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. All right. I thank God this morning that he will not let you do without. Boy, Thanksgiving, God has taken care of us. Hey, if anybody on this world ought to rejoice today, it should be an American. Hang food on our table and shoes on our feet. 
Hey, I'm talking about clothes on our back, a good place to sleep. Hey, we are so blessed. Good automobiles got you in church this morning and didn't even break down. Nobody stopped you on the way to church to check your papers and to see where you were going. Thank God we're not a third world country. We are a first class country this morning. And you love America and pray for America. America needs help. But their help's going to be found in God's people because that is a seed that is going to pray for this nation and try to help this nation turn around. But he said, I shall not want. We're blessed with all blessings. In a right way this morning, I have need of nothing. What do you need? Didn't ask you what you wanted. What do you need? You know, sometimes God doesn't give you what you want. You say, why doesn't he do that? Sometimes he does. But sometimes what you want is not good for you. You take our children. There are some things that you do not give to a child because they can't handle them. Why God gave children parents to take care of the kids. Now they're trying to take the kids and give them toys to play with that they can't handle these toys. I don't take a little five-year-old or six-year-old and give them a loaded shotgun and tell them to go down the woods and enjoy your day. I teach them gun safety. My dad taught us gun safety. Dad said, an unloaded gun will kill you. Doesn't make any sense, does it? If I watch my dad break down a shotgun and look in it and hand that shotgun to me, he taught me to break that shotgun down again just in case he did miss something. Thank God, I, I've, I've not wanted, I've not been without, I've been blessed. But I'm talking about coming over here. God has given us the world. Boy, what a blessing this morning. Then he made a statement, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. I want to look at that word maketh. You know why? Sheep are not really very smart. Sheep are not smart. Are they smart? They're not smart. They've got to have somebody lead them and feed them and do all these different things. And the Bible said that he maketh them to lie down green pasture. You'd think that's where they'd camp out, wouldn't you? You know, a lot of preachers are guilty of this. They're in grass up to their necks. They have a little bit of problem. They go running over someplace else because the grass looks a little greener over there. They find out that those pews still have people. People have problems because people have problems. People need pastors. And they go over there and they find out. They go to looking back. Now it's too late to recant. They just church hop. They'll stay someplace. Uh, years ago, the, law, the average stay in a Baptist church, and I figured that was Southern Baptist, Independent, everything else, was 18 months with a pastor. You say, why 18 months? Because he gets to know them, and then they get to know him. God makes you lie down where he feeds you. God will make... Hey, you, you let God lead you. There's no saying where God guides, God always provides. I saw one day, and I've mentioned this a hundred times, we were up on uh, going to back way to Simpsonville, up on, wasn't Georgia Road, it was up on the other one up there, and we were headed up to Simpsonville, and there were two cows at a fence. There was a barbed wire fence, had a cow on this side with his head through eating grass, and one right on the other side with his head, and they were eating grass at each other's feet. I would have given anything to have had a camera. God makes you lie where he feeds you. You say, well, he's not feeding me what I want. No, he's feeding you what you need. God's feeding you. I, I thank God for that. There are times when we just need to lie down in our wonderful pasture and learn to just rest where God puts you. Amen. Hey, flourish where you planted. God plants you somewhere, flourish. Grow. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Sheep don't like running water, by the way. They're skittish. 
the way they fed them, most time over in the Middle East, they fed them with whales, so there wasn't running water, and they drew the water. Uh, you remember when we, uh, Rachel drew the water and uh, put it all, fed all the camels, and all, or, or Rebecca, and then Rachel. Hey, same thing there. What they did, if they came to a rippling stream, they would dig a hole out the side of that stream and then just put a little duck to it and run it through, and the water would be still and the sheep would drink there. Sheep are skittish. I thank God for quiet places of refreshment that God has given me. One is my prayer closet. Two, the Word of God. Three, the house of God. Places to where you can rest. Rest in the Lord. Amen. Hey, I'm talking about God taking care of every need you've got. Hey, you know what God wants you to do? Learn to rest. That's one of the hardest things I have, I, I have to do. I tell Barbara, we need to do this at church. And she'll pull my pocket out and say, we, I tell her, that's the mouse that's in my pocket. You know, I get up in the morning, and if I'm not careful, I get too busy. And don't take care of the things that God wants me to take care of. God wants me to take care of my soul first. He wants me to pray. He wants me to read the Word of God. He wants me to feed my soul. I thank the Lord for the Bible. Amen. I'm glad God gave me something so glorious that meets every need I've got physically and spiritually, and it meets it when you need it. That's why on Thursday it was my lot to read the 23rd Psalm. Learning to relax and enjoy the blessings of God in peace. Uh, yeah, God wants you to have peace this morning. Then listen to what he said. He restoreth my soul. Restoreth. When you get to your Bible, they tell you that it's antiquated. Uh, they tell you that it's, it's, just, it's just old. It's archaic. They use all these words to defame the Word of God. The Word of God was translated in the height of the purity of the English language. I'm talking about back in Shakespearean days. I'm talking about the, that was the height. You say, well, there's words I don't understand. You've got a dictionary. Get you a Webster's Dictionary, and it doesn't have to be in 1828. You take Merriam Webster and you start reading and you get on down reading different things for the nouns and the adjectives and the verbs and all this. You get down toward the bottom, they'll give you a biblical meaning of that. Thank God for Daniel Webster. He wrote the Webster's Dictionary out of your Bible. But you find in your Bible something not used anymore. Anybody here use word processors? You type in resteth and it's going to put a line underneath it. And it's going to try to change that to rest. We find the word restore. What is that ETH ending puts it in a present perfect tense. In other words, he restores now. He restoreth, he'll, he'll restore tomorrow. He'll restore five years down the road. He'll restore ten years down the road. It's in, it's in a continuing sense. Thank God, I don't care how many times you get down this morning, he'll fix it. Just let him fix it. He'll restore you right back again and we fall. You know, the Bible said a just man falleth down seven times and he gets right back up. Amen. I, I, I thought to myself, is that before or after breakfast? Huh? Sometimes we have a little bit of problem of, uh, in, in our spirituality, all right? And God just keeps taking us back. But when he restores you, as he did Lazarus over in John chapter 12, and Martha and Mary, he restored them to a better state than they were in before Lazarus died. I dealt with that one night. He restored them. So when God uh, raised Lazarus from the dead, he wasn't done because they had that heartache of, of what was before. They had suffered during the days that he was sick and ultimately died. And what God did was God made them better after his death than it was before his death. He restored. I thank God that 
He restores me this morning. I thank the Lord. He's compassionate and loving toward His children. Hey, don't you love your kids? I was watching them back there a while ago. I mean, they, they was taking, taking the baby and the, every girl in here wanted to hold that baby. I thought, she'd go, you're going to have babysitters running out your ears. Hey, man, that pretty little boy, they are just passing them. You're, you're, hey, you, you don't know whose lap he's going to be found in. But I noticed Mama's eyes on whoever's got him. That's what mamas do. All right, she's watching out for his welfare and taking care of him. But I, I thought about that. He restores. He never gives up on you. He never gives up on me this morning. You want to be thankful for something. Then it said he leads me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. I thank God this morning that he never leads you wrong. When I was in Bible college, I was trying to lead myself, and I was seeking the Lord's will. I wanted to go to New Hampshire, start a church up above the White Mountains. That was my heart. Every time I saw a tractor trailer come by, and you know, they got these little uh, decals of the states, and I'd see that little one, that long bar. Boy, I'd say, Lord, that's where I want to go. God didn't want me there. God wanted me in Lawrence, South Carolina. And I, I, but every time I'd pray, Lord, let me go to New Hampshire. But I, I always tagged it with something I never believed. But I'd say, Lord, if you don't want me there, stop me. I never thought he would. And boy, one day God went, <laughs> boy, I've been slammed on the, I lived, I left skid marks for a hundred feet. Son, he broke me. He stopped me. And then I said, Lord, I don't know where you want me now, but I'll go wherever you want. And he said, I got a little church in Lawrence. Got seven people down there. And they need somebody to just come down there and live. He'll never lead me wrong. You can trust the path that you trod. You can trust the race that God intended you to run. God will give you the strength to run it. God will always equip you for the job that He calls you for. I'm talking about He leadeth me in paths of righteousness why for His name's sake. Then you get to the next, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. I like, I like the word yea. David said yea to death. He's a young man. He's expecting to live a long time. Huh? You know, young people die. He was expecting to live a long time. But he said, Lord, when it's my time to go, I am so good with that. You get a little bit older, Brother Bob and I back in the prayer room talking about that. Let me tell you something. Life gets sweeter, though times get more troublesome the closer we get. We got a man on his deathbed this morning. Didn't think he'd live through the night, but he did. Now we're waiting for a call, waiting for a text, or waiting for whatever. I'll check with them again this afternoon. I called them this morning. I was over there yesterday in the house with them. Try to be a blessing. Try to be a help with them. Yea, yea. That man had said many times, you pray for me to die. Has he not, Brother Bob? He's going to get his prayer request. Yea. But he said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of the death, I'll fear no evil. You know, death is a door. It's like going through that door. We, li we live here. One day we'll step through that door. The Bible said to be absent from the uh, 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 body is to be present with the Lord. The moment that spirit lifts out of there. You know, the Bible said no man is able to retain the spirit in the day of death. When God gets ready to punch your number, every doctor in South Carolina cannot save your life and none of them can kill you if you're not time to go. I'm talking about God will help us and I'm not downing doctors. I'm just telling you, they do what they can and I thank God for the wisdom that God has given these people, doctors and nurses. I pray for them in the morning. I pray for them at night. I pray for them in church. I pray for them when I pray. I pray for doctors and nurses that God will protect them. But I thought about the valley of death. He said, I fear no evil. Why? There's nothing one evil in the death itself. Now, we don't like the process. If I had my druthers, Barbara said, please don't do this. 
I'd go to bed and wake up dead in the morning. Amen. I'd be gone on the other side and she'd just have to deal with an old, cold, lifeless body there. But I thank God. For, hey, I'm not afraid of death. I have no fear of death this morning. Death is home. You step through that door, you're on the other side, and it's over with. Thank God. And he said that the Lord will be there with you. Hey, I thank God for the presence of the Lord. Dr. Seitler said years ago that God... That's people die well. They die with grace. They die with goodness. The individual I'm talking about, Brother Dale, let me tell you something. He had the grace of God. He had no fear. He's had no fear all through this process, honey. He's had none at all. I thank God this morning. The Lord will be there and no fear on the other side of the valley because we know what's waiting for us. Then he made a statement, Thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. I thank God he leads us in life. He protects us in death. The staff, the rod of that shepherd, it was to... To beat off enemies. That's what that rod was for. Old David said, I fought a lion and a bear. He said, I took that lion by the beard and I smote him. Boy, hey, I'm talking about a 16-year-old kid, son. Hey, I don't know that I would tackle a bear or a lion. Now, I'm talking about how brave this young man. He was a warrior from his youth. He, 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 he would not allow them to take one lamb out of his flock under his watch. He said, not under my watch you don't. Hey, I'm talking about the Lord protecting us. Hey, we have peace in death because he's with us, but we have the protection of death. That, that staff had a hook on it. Call it a shepherd's hook. That was his staff. The rod was just what it was. It was a long pole made out of the hardest material he could get. That staff, he could reach out and put it around a, a, the neck of a lamb, and he could pull that lamb to him. He could bring it to him. I thank God for that. Then he said, Thou anointest my head with oil, the oil of gladness. In the Bible, the oil is a type of the Holy Spirit of God. They anointed the high priest with oil. The Bible said in the 133rd Psalm that they poured it on Aaron's head and it ran down upon his beard and down to the skirts of his garments. They poured the Spirit of God, the oil of God, the anointing of God. Aren't you glad this morning that you'll never walk alone in this life? If you ever realize if you're saved, you've got the Spirit of God living in you and He's a person. He is not your conscience. Had a Baptist preacher here and down years ago said the Holy Ghost was just simply a man's conscience. I'd talked to that man about doctor before. He was about as messed up as a left-handed football bat. He had no comprehension what the Bible said. The Bible said if any man have not the Spirit of God, he's none of his. The moment you get saved, the Spirit of God comes into your life and your heart and He immerses you into the body of Christ. That's called the baptism of the Holy Ghost. That's not speaking in tongues, jumping up and down. It's something you don't feel, but something you need to understand. The moment you get saved, God places you in Christ. And then Christ in you, Christ in you, the hope of glory. I thank God this morning. He gave us the Spirit of God. He gave us the oil of gladness. He said, my cup runneth over. Thank the Lord when the joy of your salvation is so great. Somebody said, when the cup runs over, the saucer gets a blessing. You know, old people used to drink from their saucers. Reason being, they boiled that. They didn't have these coffee makers like we got. I, I've, I've got a bun at home. I, I've, used all, I've used all kinds. It doesn't matter what you use. That water is hot. But as soon as I pour it in my cup, I can start sipping it. I can drink it. My mom and dad used to boil that water on the stove. I mean, tell you, it would light you up. It would numb your tongue. It would burn your lips. You, I'd blow on it and blow on it. My dad could drink it. He drank a cup of coffee while I was trying to blow for a couple of more sips. He done looking for that second cup. I'm talking about my cup runneth over. 
For the blessings of God get so big in your life, you can't hold them any longer. You've got to just praise God for what he's done. Go down the road a lot of time with my hand up in the air. I listened to WTBI and listened to some old man of God preach. I listened to Dr. Seitler the other day. He never gets old. Amen. I thank God for the legacy that we have through tapes and recordings that we can look back to the past. Though I hate it, they keep upgrading this technology. Do you know your new computers don't have a CD-ROM? Anybody notice that? You know, you can buy you one for about $38. That plugs into a USB. But I've got four laptops. I restored two of them. Somebody just gave me one. They said, it ain't no good. They're going to throw it in the garbage. Oh, no, it ain't thrown in the garbage. See, I can get into it. I can get into the bias. I can get into the inner workings of that thing and I can make myself the administrator and put a new password in and I can bypass that other one and then when I get into it, I can kick him out. <laughs> Three of them have CD-ROM. One of them's got the top of it's broke. You open it up, it pops up on the side. The hinges have given away with it. That's all right, I keep it. You know why? Because I've got programs that are on CD-ROMs. Now, some of them I put on a, 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 a thumb drive. But I hate the old technology, our cassette tape players. There's no good to you anymore. Eight trap tapes, they're gone. I thank God this morning that God blesses us with blessings that we'll never run out of. Then in verse number 12, he said, Surely goodness and mercy. Ah. You say, God not good. That's what Israel said. Israel said that all through there. Boy, we got to chapter number uh, 20 this morning. That new bunch that's going into the Canaan's land said the same thing that old bunch did that died in the wilderness. Same thing. Surely goodness and mercy. God's good all the time. Listen, His mercies are good every morning. When you wake up in the morning, the mercy of God beats you up. Aren't you glad God didn't beat you up? Amen. God said, I've got mercy. I've got grace for you this morning. I've got my love waiting on you this morning. Hey, today is the first day of the rest of your life and what you do with it is up to you. I found out like them little kid things. You write on them, you zip, and it's all gone. You get up in the morning, it's all history. Today is history to be written. That is history to be observed. We live in days where they're trying to uh, no longer teach history or change history. Listen, if you do not read and study history, you are doomed to repeat it. We can learn good. We can learn bad. Things that work. Things that don't work. Things that could work and some things that shouldn't work. But I thank God this morning the goodness and mercy of God is there. Mercy and goodness that we don't deserve. Then he said, she'll follow me all days of my life. I, I dealt with this a little bit earlier. Follow me. What does goodness and mercy do? Wherever you go, Sometimes you're going the right way. Anybody here ever gone the wrong way? Goodness and mercy still followed you. That's why he didn't say goodness and mercy leads you. He said, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. You know what? Hey, when he sinned with Bathsheba, the goodness and mercy of God was there to restore him in Psalm chapter 51. We find the penitent psalm of a man of God with a broken and contrite heart and spirit came before God and got that thing restored and taken care of. Hey, I'm talking about it'll follow you all the days. Wherever you go, it'll always be there with you. And then last he said, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is our short home. In Ecclesiastes, the Bible said that man goeth to his long home. Isn't that a blessing? You know, you got a long home. Got a short home. 
Yesterday, I was a kid. I talked to a missionary yesterday on the phone. He's 34 years old. Starting out on deputy, 34 years old. I told him, God called me into the ministry when I was 34. Got saved at age 28. God called me at 34. He said, how long ago was that? I said, a whole lot longer than 34 years. Hey, I'm talking about life. David said in one breath, I was once young and now I'm old. And he didn't even take a breath in between the two. Friend, let me tell you something. Your life will be over before you can shake a lamb's tail. I'm not that, hey, I'm 75, pumping my way halfway to 76. My bride, 74, on her way to 75. Yesterday we were kids. I was 14, she was 13. We fell in love. You say kids can't fall in love. Let me tell you something. Them puppies can love, friend, and them pumpy, puppies can stay in love. 61 years later, friend, we, hey, we are closer now than we have ever been in our life. And by the way, you young families, if you'll stick through the bad times, you'll end up with something that is better than you ever started with. You've got you to honor and stick through the bad. Hey, life's hard. Life's tough. I'm going to deal with that tonight. I'm going to leave that alone. But I want to tell you something. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I am just a breath away from death. People say, what are you planning for dinner tomorrow? I have no plans. <laughs> I don't buy green bananas. I want to be able to enjoy them. Hey, bad. I don't want them. All right, you don't have to worry about it at Walmart. They turn brown before you get them in the car. I don't know if they spray something on those things. I mean, they're green. You take them home and they're yellow and got brown spots. And I said, hey, this, this wasn't but 30 minutes ago. Somebody said, if you break them off and wash them, they don't do that. I don't know and I don't care. You know, I like green bananas. I like them so green you can't hardly peel them. I like them that way. My, they, when they get what I used to call Meemaw ripe, that was my mother, they called her Meemaw, they were as brown with little black spots on them, and I'm so soft, and it, you say it's awful. No, that's when you make your banana bread. That's when you make that banana, mama made banana pudding. Her banana pudding was brown, not yellow. Some of the best you ever put in your life. I thank God for something. I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I thank God for my home and my homes. When we gave ours up in Kentucky, we had no plans for tomorrow other than to go to Bible college. Everything that we had, we sold or gave away. When we left Kentucky with a big U-Haul truck, pulling a vehicle, Barbara following in a vehicle with everything we had everything in this world that we owned. I thank God we left no bridges to cross. We left Kentucky. We went over the bridge at Morton's Gap, Kentucky, where Mom and Dad lived. And I'll never forget, I put my hand up and I said goodbye, and not with sadness in my heart. Friend, we were on a brand new way and we were excited about where we were going. Thank God. God moved my heart before He ever moved us physically. God already moved our heart out of there. But I thank God that I've got a long home. This is a short little old thing down here. It's almost over with. I'm good with that. But friend, the moment you step out of your body, you're going to be home for an eternity. You talk about excitement. New body, new home. Hey, hey, you don't need an automobile. I believe according to the Bible that you will move just with the speed of thought. Our Lord had a body resurrected that He came through the walls when the doors and the windows were shut. He never opened anything. And then He ate bread and fish with them when He got in there, friend. Hey, a body that could be touched, but a body that... hey. He just moved through the crowds. I thank God one day we're going to be home. You're talking about something to be thankful for this morning. If you're not saved, you're foolish. Did I explain it right? 
It's free. It's simple. <laughs> it's eternal. Hey, it's fun. <laughs> Amen. Huh? I'd rather be an old time Christian Lord than anything I know this morning. Happy Thanksgiving. We've got a lot to be thankful for. Let's stand this morning. If you need to come, you come. Psalm 104 said, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him. Bless his holy name. If you need to come this morning, you come. I thank God we've got a lot to be happy about. Hey, hey get over the mully grubs and the poochy lip. Rejoice in the Lord all the way. And again, I say rejoice. I like that, amen. Have fun.